the Galaxy S21 Ultra, in my eyes, the best choice for a lot of people in 2023 when you're talking about someone who wants a relatively compromise-free flagship experience, but you want to be in that sub-$500 category. There are a lot of fantastic devices, sub-$500 now, the Pixel 6a being one of them. But I do believe it's a different type of buyer, the Pixel 6a, versus someone who's going to be looking at an S21 Ultra. Amazon Renewed link will be in the description. We're talking around $430. I've seen them for less. The price fluctuates depending on stock but you're going to be getting a nice example with that 90-day warranty for around $430. And what do I mean by a certain type of buyer? Well, if you're a Pixel 6a buyer or somebody who's getting that budget device, you want something new, you want kind of what that Pixel provides, and you're willing to compromise on certain things. You're willing to compromise on wireless charge. You're willing to compromise on a 1080p display, refresh rate, all these other things in order to pick up that software support and the other Pixel extras that you get with it. But if you're somebody who's not a Pixel person, you're an Android person through and through, you've loved Samsung for however long now, and you really don't need an S Pen, then the S21 Ultra is the sweet spot of features and performance. So let's talk about what you get there. Number one is the display. You're going to get full 120 hertz, you're going to get that Quad HD display, and it is gorgeous. And if anything, you know, I like this display better than I like the display on the S22 Ultra, which is better than the display on the S23 Ultra. Personal preference, okay? If you like the punchier displays, if you like that deep, deep color saturation, then the S21 Ultra gave it to you. In fact, I didn't even realize how far we've strayed from this until I saw it again, having come from the S22 Ultra into the S23 and noticing, well, there's some, you know, kind of tone back on the saturation there. And I went back to this and said, wow, it's a major change. And you'll notice it right away. If you like that punchy, almost cartoonish saturation on your displays, this is the one for you. And the reason why I really want to pick this one out is because, you know, the, the S22 Ultra in relatively decent condition, you're still talking about 800 bucks there to get a good one that's properly specced. If you don't need the S Pen, if you don't care about the design, this is a fantastic design, by the way. It, it, it's a shame to me that the really awesome Samsung designs didn't get a second go of it. The S10 Plus didn't get a second go when that was a fantastic design. And the S21 Ultra, a really fantastic design. In fact, two of their best designs in their history didn't get a second go, which is disappointing. But if you're a classic S fan, if you're coming from an S7 or an S8 or something like that, then this is the last of those devices that's really going to scratch that itch that still gives you everything. Don't forget, the S23 Ultra, or the S23 Plus now, rather, gives you that 1080p display. There's some compromises there that this one didn't have so that's something that you have to consider but the performance with the snapdragon 888 is still fantastic and when you pair that with how rock solid one ui 5.1 is you're really in for something special and when i i've been using the s23 ultra a lot it's been my daily driver it's been in my pocket along with a bunch of other devices a busy time of year but it's been in my pocket so i could tell you and i don't want i don't want to do a full comparison of these two but the performance is there you're not going to notice any sort of huge downgrade in terms of how fast something like Twitter runs. You're getting all the optimizations of One UI 5.1. You're getting all the benefits of it, all the features, but you're doing it in a, in a package that costs you $430. Not only that, you're getting, let's say budget phones, you know, for the most part, if you look at Moto or Nokia, you're lucky to get, I don't know, one or two years of support. You're guaranteed at least two more upgrades major upgrades of Android if you pick up an S21 Ultra today. Not only that, you get the extra year of support after it, so you're not exactly shut out of security updates. You got a lot of life left in this for not a lot of money. And you pick up the build quality, you pick up things like wireless charge, reverse wireless charge, wireless decks that people go nuts about. Those are all things that you could get that would normally be reserved for a flagship level device that you're paying $1,000 plus for, but you get to pick it up and take advantage of all that for that less money. Battery life's the big hit, really. I mean, the, the, the Snapdragon 888 was not power efficient. <laughs> it heats up. You know, that's why it makes me laugh when I go back to these older devices and people were telling me, oh, what, what, especially with the Pixel 7 Pro, but, oh, my other device, my Samsung never heated up. Well, you know, they're easy with that. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah they did. You, you didn't feel it because it heats up back here instead of on the band like the, S, uh, the uh, Pixel 7 Pro does. But it heats up. The Snapdragon 888 was horribly ill-op. <laughs> it's just bad. But... You get the performance, 
You're looking at five, five and a half hours of screen on time. That's the most, uh, it, that's going to be fine for a lot of people. It, you charge it during the day. You just understand that that's a limitation that you're going to have to deal with going into something like this. Camera will throw up a shot. Still pretty good. You know, you're getting the periscope zoom. You're getting the, the other lenses that you have there. Still perfectly nice. It's still going to be a sharp image. Don't forget the computer optimizations and the computational photography comes with the software. So as Samsung updates One UI, you're going to get that trickle-down effect of those enhanced camera things that they do, and that's going to enhance your images as, the, as time goes on with the updates for the S21 Ultra. So you get that on there. Not only that, this is going to be... Uh, this is going to be... If you've ever held an S21 Ultra, this is going to be almost dumb to say. It's light. Light to hold. In comparison... To the S23 Ultra, which was a really chonky boy. S22 Ultra was a really chonky boy. And then the S23 Ultra was an even bigger chonky boy. So this, when I picked this up after picking up my S10 Plus, this feels like a tank. I, those other ones make it actually feel light in comparison. You know, we our black cat Xavier's pretty fat, but my mother-in-law has a really fat cat. A big boned cat. And when you pick him up and carry him and they pick up our cat, it's like, oh, it's just not so bad. But he's still pretty fat. So kind of deal here with the S21 Ultra. So just keep that in mind. But if you're if you're trying to get away from at least a little bit of these bigger, bigger and heavier phones, this is at least a little lighter in the pocket. But the bottom line here, and the reason why I do think this is the best choice for a lot of people, is if you're honest with yourself about your cell phone usage, pictures, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, GroupMe, whatever you're going to be doing, the Snapdragon 888, is still going to get you all of that performance and then some for a price that's palatable for a lot more people. Okay, nothing is is truly affordable. You know, affordable is a tough uh, metric to to kind of pin down. But if you can get all these features sub five hundred dollars, and the only trade off you're really making is the fact that you have to be okay with a Amazon renewed or a pre owned device, then I feel like you're doing well by yourself if you're comfortable with something like that, because you're going to get everything you need and then some in a, a device that's still being supported, that's got the latest and greatest in terms of Android software, I think, and One UI 5.1. I can't uh, rave about One UI 5.1 enough. And if you can get that, get into that ecosystem at a flagship level for a sub $500 price, I think that's absolutely a win, especially if you don't need an S Pen. There's no reason in my mind, to pay that premium to go up to an S22 Ultra, even renewed, at $800, $850, when you can get a, a, a heck of a large percentage of that performance. And in some cases, people are going to like this design better. You're not going to notice any drop-off, and you're going to save yourself $400. So this starts to make a lot of sense. And I think for most people, this is definitely the choice for 2023, if you're looking at a device sub $500. I think you could do a heck of a lot worse than the S21 Ultra. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.